how important is the viewer experience and how do you ensure that that's always like at the forefront of what you are doing? I mean, that's everything to us and to me for my job. Sports at the end of the day is like watching a movie. <laughs> it's like, you really gotta make sure you're tailoring everything to your audience and to fans. I think hockey is especially interesting just because with hockey, it's such an intimate arena. And mm. as a crowd member, you go there and you really just feel like you're a part of it more than I feel like any other sport. Um, you know, at Climate Pledge specifically, it's like the lighting and everything is just so immersive as a fan. And so we really try to make sure, like, when you're going to Seattle Kraken game, like, you're, you're going to want to remember that experience and going to want to come to more. NIL um, stands for Name Image Likeness. Um, and, you know, it was established for college athletes to, you know, kind of capitalize off of the brand. I, I always say, I'm like, how did athletes go so long without being, you know, paid for their position in sports? Um, and, you know, it's not to say that they're being paid for how well they're doing, but just, you know, they've established an audience for themselves and they have fans. So how how would they? It's like they're being robbed all these years mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, potential profit. If you have been watching the podcast for a while now, you'll have seen me wear these primitive athletic tops. They are now available. And I'm really excited because I work out in them a lot. I tend to work out quite hard, but I also like to be comfortable. So that's why when I was picking out the materials for this top, I went with a pure cotton. If you would like to get yourself a top and support the channel, they are available on my website, primitiveathletics.com. Athletics with an X. Hello and welcome back to PA Chocker. Today we've got... Lila, how are you doing? Hi, good, how are you? I'm good. So if you just let us know who you are and what you do and yeah. how you got here. Beautiful. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm Layla. I'm from the Bay Area in California originally, and I came up here to Seattle to go to school at the University of Washington. Um, and I'm a senior, about to graduate. So I have one more quarter to go. Um, and I want to go into the sports industry. That's what I'm currently pursuing. And I'm still kind of navigating what that really looks like for me. Um, right now I work as a marketing intern for UW athletics. I am an entertainment assistant for the Seattle Kraken, and I run the social media for Washington's NIL store. Um, and yeah, it's been really fun kind of figuring out where my place is in the sports industry. Um, but I'm, I've am i gotten, you know, have some experience and I'm getting there slowly, figuring it out. <laughs> That's sick. What's the differences between each role? Yeah, so within UW Athletics in my marketing position, I'm, I'm an intern. So I'm with, you know, a whole team of other interns and we work every single type of sport offered at UW, um, from, you know, tennis to basketball to, you know, UW football, go dogs. Um, and so, yeah, we just have like a couple games that were all scheduled. Oh yeah, there you go, go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's been really fun. That was like my first kind of introductory into anything sports related. I, you know, I played football in high school as the only girl on my team um, and I, came to UW thinking I wanted to pursue business and was kind of, you know, unfortunately weeded out by the classes that they say will weed you out. And, but luckily one of my best friends, Samaya, she introduced me to this program with UW Athletics. And I owe a lot to her that, you know, kind of got me introduced to the sports world. And now I'm, you know, still with marketing and yeah, it's been, it's been nice. It's a fun experience for sure. Yeah. What's it like making it in a football team being sort of, of the opposite gender to what it's circated for. Yeah. Oh, I can talk about football forever. Um, so I'll, I'll give just a front to back of what happened with with my short but super fun football it's career. It's an amazing story. I loved it. <laughs> um, so my for eight years growing up, I played soccer. Um, and I was always kind of the girl that wanted to do the corner kicks, or I was you know chosen by my team to do the corner kicks because I could just without fail boot the ball. Like I was, that was like my one, I wasn't really good at anything else in soccer other than I could just kick the bar, kick the ball far. Um, and so 
I quit soccer in eighth grade just to pursue dance full time. And so I was a competitive dancer for many years and then did it in high school as well. Um, And then my junior year of high school, I was talking with two of my friends that were on the football team and we had just come off a state championship win. So, you know, Menlo Atherton football was all anyone was talking about. And I just kind of like threw it out there to my friends as a joke, just to like get a couple laughs. And I was like, oh, like, what if I was a kicker on the team? And I went home that day and I told my mom, I was like, mom, I said something like I might actually, you know, (laughs) be serious about. Um, And she was like, you know what? Like immediately was supportive. She was like, you know what? Like if you can do this, like you did soccer, you have the skill, you like just transition what you have from soccer into football. Like it can't be that different. It's just the difference Mm -hmm. of a ball. And, you know, we got a field goal in front of you. Um, And so she bought me a football, bought me a kicking tee. Um, I didn't even know if I was allowed to play yet from, you know, my school or the conference or anything. Um, But we went to Pali, which was MA, my school's rival high school nearby. And I didn't even want to be seen. Like I was gatekeeping by every, like I did not want anyone to know I was doing this, which is like really funny of me. I don't know why I did that, but I was like, I'm just going to be secretive and like figure out if I even can do this. Um, So we went out in the dark at my rival high school and I just booted the ball, like just would go there every single day after school, wait till it was dark um, and just kind of like get reps in. And once I had, you know, some film I could show my coaches, um, I went up to him and I was just like, hey, like this is, I want to be a part of the football team. I know we haven't done this before and nearby schools haven't done this. Um, And I just, you know, kind of proposed that to him. And he told me, as long as you're willing to work as hard as the guys, I don't have a problem with it. And I was like, say less, like, okay, cool. Like, that's all I really wanted to hear. I just wanted that validation. Like, okay, you can do this. You just have to work hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had been working hard weeks before, so it wasn't like I was ready, ready for the grind. And so, yeah, I joined, um, winter workouts that God, what year would that have been? 2019, January, mm-hmm. um, started with like strength and conditioning practices, which were extremely humbling, <laughs> 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 just coming from like a dancer's stamina to football, like I just really, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, but, you know, my coaches whipped me into shape. My team was so initially supportive, which I thank them so much for. Like, they had every right to be like, why is a girl on my team? Like, that just, it's a f- totally new and foreign thing to them. So I really wouldn't have blamed them if they didn't, like, weren't as accepting. Um, but luckily, they they just, like, took me in as a sister. And it was immediately, like, I felt that team bond mm-hmm. that, you know, you, you hear about, like, as a, kind of brotherly football team. Um, and then, yeah, I went to go, I bought, or I, uh, how would you say this? There was a, there was a guy on the team before me and I had to kind of fight him for that starting spot as a PAT kicker. Um, and so I won in that little challenge, which was really fun. So, um, yeah, I won the starting spot, joined my high school football team as for my senior season. And yeah, played with a lot of great players that have now gone on to different schools. We have, you know, Troy Franklin at Oregon, Jeremiah Irby at Cal, Skylar Thomas at Oregon State. Um, So we, yeah, it was the time of my life. I I peaked in high school, as I like to say. (laughs) And I thought it's something that... (laughs) It's true, though. I was just, I was on top of the world. Like, everything was just so much fun. It was, Yeah. yeah, it was great. What was it like taking that first kick and getting over the post? Oh gosh. I, I just remember being a big bundle of nerves. My first game, (laughs) I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, honestly, it was, it was, it was incredible. My teammates were so proud of me. They hyped me up. They like were banging on my helmet, like just so proud of me. So it was nice to have that support. Otherwise I don't think I could have done it as easily. Um, yeah, it was a great feeling. We even played in Levi stadium for one of our games. Um, so getting to be in the 49er stadium, which is my home team, was awesome. And I can say I was the only girl to score a point in Levi Stadium, which is pretty cool. That is sick. Yeah, it's a fun little, that is sick. little bag. Yeah. So how does that not sort of transpire into like what you do now? Yeah, um, I feel like sports for a lot of people is a hobby or it's, you know, for entertainment. Um, 
And I slowly started to realize, you know, I want to make this something that I can make my career and pursue full time. I, I am just so passionate about sports. I was joking earlier, we always have some mm. kind of sports game on on our television, like sports for my roommate and I smile. Baseball. Except for baseball. <laughs> I mean, there's a I I can watch a baseball game. I'm just not the biggest fan. <laughs> I grew up with the Giants, which were great when I was a kid. So they went to the World Series like 5,000 times, which, you know, I should be more of a baseball fan then. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to make sports something that I could pursue full time. And, you know, as much as I love to have an array of game day snacks on my table and watch it on the TV, it's just so much more fun to experience, you know, kind of the behind the scenes of everything that goes on in the production of the game. Hmm. Yeah. So what's it like at the Krakens and behind the scenes with everything that you do? Yeah. So at the Kraken, I am an entertainment assistant. So I'm helping produce most of those kind of in-game elements that you see as a fan. Um, everything between, you know, contestant games, to figuring out different media timeouts. Um, and so, you know, on a game day, for example, I work all the home game days. We get there at 1 p.m. for a 7 p.m. tip-off. Mm. Is that what you would call it in hockey? Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> you should probably know that. Um, the 7 p.m. start game time. We're there at 1 p.m. And we'll like go through a script review. Um, and that's going to be including everyone that's on the production team. That's going to be lighting people, audio people, graphic people. We're all in the same meeting just to go through the entire run of the show. Um, and then we'll kind of break up into our separate departments. And we'll go through our own again, another script review, um, mm. just kind of delegating different tasks to different people uh, and just kind of seeing, you know, what where each of us need to be to make a successful show. Then we'll go into rehearsals. So I'll give you a good example of this. Yesterday, we had a Seattle Kraken game and we did these big blow up balls, the ones that people can go into and hit each other with. Oh, yeah. um, and we just, you know, as we're like guinea pigs. So we're trying to see like how the game is going to work for the fans. And if, you know, there's any additional things we can add to it to make it better. Um, and so fireball had sponsored this one. So we, you know, had the fireball sweaters on going out there, hitting each other with these balls, just trying to see like what it's, what it's going to be like for fans. Um, so yeah, we'll have those rehearsals. Then we'll meet with the C squad for which the Seattle Kraken is kind of like a little hype crew that help with yeah. a lot of the contestant games as well. And we'll go through another script review with them. Um, and then it's game time. And then it's just kind of running around, trying to get to where you need to be, making sure our hosts are okay. You know, we got a live camera. We got a mic. Um, just, yeah, constant. It's, it's pretty constant it's game mm. day. But, um, there's always time to have fun and enjoy the sport, which is why, you know, I love working in sports so much. Yeah. What's How important is the viewer experience and... How do, you, how do you ensure that that's always like at the forefront of what you are doing? Yeah, good question. Um, I mean, that's everything to us and to me for my job. Um, sports at the end of the day is like watching a movie. <laughs> it's like you really got to make sure you're tailoring everything to your audience and to fans. I think hockey is especially interesting just because with hockey, it's such an intimate arena. And mm. as a crowd member you go there and you really just feel like you're a part of it more than I feel like any other sport um you know at climate pledge specifically it's like the lighting and everything it's just so immersive as a fan and so we really try to make sure like when you're going to Seattle Kraken game like you're you're going to want to remember that experience and going to want to come to more um and so everything we do is especially as a on the production and entertainment side of things is to you know have entertaining games and make sure fans are having the best experience possible when they come in. Yeah. What's your favorite part about what you do to get that best viewed experience? Ooh, my favorite part. I would say my favorite part is the games and getting fun contestants. I don't know. I, I, there's everything. I, I can't say many bad things about working in sports. I have like had very minimal bad experiences. I, I, I have fun at my work every single day. Like it's, it's honestly, yeah. um, I think yeah. that comes across when like you're speaking about it though, because like there's people that just come into this industry thinking it's, oh, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, but they don't actually apply themselves mm. to what they, 
doing put across themselves in it which yeah. like kind of speaking to you off camera like you showed that you were like like you you're walking in and every day is like just a blast for you yeah don't get me wrong there are the days where everything can go downhill very quickly like there's technical issues that can happen that make you have to rewrite an entire script and although it can be very stressful and it's a very timely you know you have to have all your ducks in a row when working in sports um it for me sports is so much fun and like such a big piece of my heart to me that i i'll take those chaotic moments any day like forgetting to experience what i do in my career which is yeah. nice. what's the script writing process like for you i'm not too much on the script writing side um that has to do everything with you know like our sponsorships that we get where we have to have certain elements of you know we have a contract with this company where do they want their game do they want it in the first time out second time out um mm. and then it's just kind of up to delegating you know who's gonna who's available to do what task when you know people are on opposite sides of the arena doing something else yeah so how does that differ between uh UW and your role there Yes, with UW, um, I guess I have had more experience writing scripts at UW, uh, but it's same same kind of process. Um, it starts with kind of brainstorming what we want, again, fans <laughs> to want to experience. A lot of it with marketing has to do with giveaways. Um, and that's like, you know, the first thing fans see when they come into the, to the game. We've got a marketing table set up, ready with posters, <laughs> ready with, you know, maybe rally towels, whatever it is, that game. Um, and yeah, we'll just make sure they they have a good time. For good first impression is always what we want yeah. with marketing, yeah. <laughs> What's it like sort of bouncing between those two and what does your schedule look like? My schedule is pretty crazy <laughs> looking. Um, I have six jobs total and I like to keep myself very busy. Um, it's nice because they're all very part-time. So, you know, with UW, it's, I'm only really working certain game days for certain sports. I only probably have like five soccer games a quarter, uh, five basketball games, and then we work every football game. Um, and like a couple sports sprinkled out in there. Um, crack and I just work every home game, which, you know, some days I can, or some weeks I can be like four games a week and some weeks you we don't have any games. Um, so it's just a pretty constant up and down schedule. Um, it's, it's busy. It's a little chaotic, yeah. but it works for me, which is nice. <laughs> What's the, the other roles that you have? Yeah, so I have the UW, I have Kraken. Um, I run the social media for the Washington NIL store, which just launched actually probably about three weeks ago. Um, it's part of the larger organization Campus Inc. And they make customized apparel for different you know clubs, um, in this case, it's for different athletes at UW. Um, so yeah, my job is to do, run the social media. I have to post once a day on Instagram and Twitter, which has been a lot more challenging than I had anticipated. <laughs> but um, I'm just, I, I don't have a ton of like graphic design experience, although media is something I would love to pursue. It's, it's got a big learning curve. So I'm still mm. kind of in the process of figuring out like, what makes like a good social media post and how I can use like my marketing experience with UW to, you know, help push athletes profiles and their apparel mm. um, and like recruiting athletes to want to be a part of it as well. Yeah. Um, how do you manage sort of class times and these different roles that you have? Yeah, I just, I still want to make school priority, obviously. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll, luckily I'm only taking about 14 credits right now and, then one of my classes is online, so it's not too bad. Um, I I do try, try to not fall into the habit of wanting to pursue, you know, my jobs more than school. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it goes back to, you know, I have so much fun at my work. Why, you know, I'm already like just thinking about post-grad. Um, mm. But, you know, focusing on school now, going to class more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's dope. Um, so with sort of your role with the Krakens and how you like take the viewer experience like a top priority, what some of the like, I'm guessing psycho psychological factors that you just look at when you are trying to make this experience? 
Hmm. Do you mean for um, like certain in-game hmm. elements or kind of like what makes a, a fan a good contestant kind of? Like what we're looking I'd, for? I'd love to hear about both. Okay. <laughs> that's, a good, um, that's a good point though. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, whenever we have a game, we're looking for a spirited fan. We want someone that's going to be, you know, whether they're coming on ice, they're in Seattle gear, they're decked out, they have the squid hat, um, they're ready to go. We want someone that's like fired up, especially for like the, we call them Zorbs, these big blow up balls that people mm-hmm. go up in. Um, we wanted someone that would go crazy, go ham on the ice and like fly backwards, which if you go on Twitter right now, you'll probably see the game we had last night, which is gaining a lot of traction on Twitter because it was quite entertaining. They went full head to head, flew backwards, and people were saying it was the best halftime or, or I guess mid between period. What mm-hmm. do we call it? Intermission. The intermission games we've ever had. Um, and it's my personal favorite. But that was really due to finding we saw a lot of people. We waited in the arena for a lot of people to come in. Um, and we're hunting around for like, a, just trying to find the right person. Um, and luckily we found three of them, which was great. <laughs> I'm trying to find them. Yeah, I think, yeah, search someone, someone found a screenshot of it yesterday. It had, we had, they just posted it and had like 200 likes on, on Twitter. Nice. What's but, the, what's the best part of sort of like bouncing between these roles for you? I mean, just every day is an, every day, every game is a new day. Like there's, it's just constant everything, you know, everything it's, it's new. Every, there's a new script, every game. Um, we've got new games, um, for contestants, every, every new game. It's, it's exciting. It's an exciting place to be. <laughs> yeah, no, that's dope. And I think like, because, and we were sort of talking about this before, it's like majority of what we do, obviously we do it cause we love it. But like the fans that support what mm-hmm. we're doing as well is like the biggest part about sort of the community that's built around it. What's some of like the most rewarding moments that you've seen? The most what? Sorry. Rewarding. Sorry. Reward. Oh, great question. <sighs> Let me think about that because I really do want a good answer. There, I mean, every single game I'm impressed with what we're able to put on. Um, have you seen the new LED lights in the stadium? <laughs> I think I have actually because they made a big post in there. One of my favorite moments this season was our first night game. Um, and that was the first time we were able to kind of unveil our new LED lights, which were fully tailored for fan experience. You know, we see all those like other Big Ten schools with these crazy stadiums and crazy light intros and everything. And so Washington finally leveled up, got those lights, and we had that intro video go for our football game. Um, with the lights, you know, coordinated with it. And you could just tell the fans loved it. It just made the whole experience 30 times more immersive. Yeah, there you go. And they, you know, it's connected with the audio, it's connected with the video. So it just feels like you're in this movie and it's it's game day, you know. I, I love the LED lights. Yeah. Big, I think it does make, like, especially with the sirens that go off, uh, like, every touchdown. <laughs> Like yep. that immersion feeling that you must get from it. Yeah. It's nice to see where now, now knowing what I know working in sports, it's like, I feel like I can never go to another sports game without thinking about all the hot behind the scenes that they're doing. It's like, we always <laughs> joke about that. We're like, just can't rest. Like we just want to know, like, where are the live cameras? Where are just thinking about all those different behind the scenes things. Um, and so, yeah, we've seen at a UW game. I'm like, oh, I know one of my interns is over there with, you know, our special guests sounding the siren or, you know, I, they're putting off the purple smoke and doing, you know, the flags, all of those things. It's like, oh, I can see where those are all coordinated with different people now. So yeah, a lot of people don't realize how many like screens and TVs that are around the stadium as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Seeing the Kraken control room is crazy. They don't even see the ice. They, they mm. are in a room <laughs> during games and there's just 30,000 screens with a million different things going on. And I'm just like, I'm glad you guys can understand this because i surely can't <laughs> um no the thing with that the, the biggest thing that surprised me is during the fourth of july uh UW does this workout which is red wine boom and like that's when i truly realized that how many 
elements go into like the stadium and like mm-hmm. you just see like america well i just saw american flags all the way around and like red white and boom and just like everything was tailored to that special event and it's like it's how quickly these guys can turn around and make these changes totally yeah i mean when it's a football game day at 12 30 we were there at six or you know for oregon college game day Oregon College game day was the best day of my entire life. And it was also the longest. I was up for 26 hours that day. I, yeah, I went to bed at 1130 and I got up at 1230 and I had to be at work at two. <laughs> two in the morning, I had to be at work and we went uh-huh. to Red Square. Um, and yeah, we had the full game day and I was wanted to celebrate our win, obviously. So I ended up going to bed at probably like three and I was just the longest day of my life but it was the best day ever would would do it a million more times <laughs> yeah so what's that experience like going and watching one of the biggest rival games that you'd up play uh well it's tricky for me because my former teammate was you know is troy franklin who's a wide receiver on oregon so i have a, a little bit of a soft spot a little bit like just <laughs> just a smidge um for oregon and i know their team very well so I'm I, as a viewer, I'm obviously rooting for Washington. Obviously, don't get that mm. one twisted. <laughs> Just it's nice to see people you know, you know, do well. Yeah. Um, that game specifically, though, was I mean, seeing it from the 6 a.m. broadcast for college game day, there were fans lined up when mm-hmm. I got there. There was probably 300 fans oh. lined up at 2 a.m. People stayed out at like 9 p.m. from the night before. Um, and everyone was just so pumped. I've never experienced energy like that from fans. And I mean, it just felt so, everyone was so together rooting for one thing. So it was just really nice to, you know, help be a part of that. We were there at 2 a.m. giving away beanies and signs and everyone just loved it. Everyone had so much energy at 2 a.m. You never, you never see that. So it was, it was just so cool. I, ugh, I missed that game. That was so cool. <laughs> That's something that I unfortunately never got to experience was that college football day yeah. like i left just before they started um it's the best but yeah but like i think like watching some of the clips from like people that i know there and some of the coaches i'm just like that just sounds intense and it's just like it's no wonder that it's the best setting in, in uh, college football football yes it's true i i will stand behind that till the day i die <laughs> Game days, game days at Husky Stadium are unmatched. They're perfect. <laughs> yeah. How? What's that process like of making like this experience so immersive for the fans? I mean, it's just really, it's it's pretty easy in sports because as you know, I work in sports, but I can also attest to what it's like to go to games and you know being a fan. So it's really just getting in your own head and f- figuring out what would you want to see. You know, going mm. to this game. So in that way, it makes it pretty easy because you're, you're kind of your own demographic, which makes things a little bit more simple. Um, and then you can just throw in fun elements of different, you know, pulling from different resources and different departments, and then it all just comes together. <laughs> yeah. No, that's amazing. Cause like you were talking about earlier before we started recording that like at the Krakens, the atmosphere of the games and how everything's laid out is so like immersive. Yeah. What's the sort of, how, how have you found that it works? You mean, like, how do you think that makes it so immersive? Like, what is it about it that makes it so immersive? Oh, at Kraken specifically, yeah, I've been really impressed with how, I mean, the fan engagement with the Kraken. Um, I when I was interviewing for the Kraken position that um, I have now, this is what I talked about, and I think it's probably in large why I got the role. Um, but just because I would go to hockey games growing up, and even as a kid who doesn't have a very long attention span. I could go to a hockey game and immediately been be enthralled with, you know, the lighting, the the mascot is running around the arena. You can you can see the mascot from, you know, across the arena. And it just feels, you know, compared to like a open stadium football game, mm. when you're in that enclosed arena with hockey, it's it's pretty hard not to, you know, you can't take your eyes off the ice or at least with the, the different in-game elements that are happening um at least with like event production. Um, it's it, yeah, I, I just really love hockey for that reason. You just, you can't kind of escape your own experience as soon as you walk into the arena. Yeah. While you're going through sort of 
every checklist that you do, what's like the biggest priorities that you have? Hmm. A lot of it. So a lot of our setup, I think, is important because it all happens pregame and we want to make sure, you know, going, going back to when fans walk in, they have an, like an immediate impression, impression of what that game is going to be like. Um, so making sure as soon as when fans walk in, our job is essentially done for like an hour. When gates open, we should be chilling for like an hour because everything is set up for them to like immediately enjoy. Um, so yeah, just making sure they have a fun first impression. Yeah. So what's that process like between sort of they're not in the stadium yet and you're just like setting up and processing everything? Yeah. Um, a lot of it is physical labor, <laughs> which is another part of working in sports. Um, yeah, we're, we're moving things around all the different levels, getting giveaways ready. Um, what sort getting... of giveaways is like the main giveaway? Ooh, well, at Kraken, it's it's different every game. Um, sometimes there's not going to be a giveaway, which it's a bummer if you, if you go to a Kraken game on those <laughs> days. But, um, we've had a couple bobbleheads given out. We've had uh, posters, rally towels. For you, Dub, it's a lot of our branded gear between like Pepsi and Adidas. So we had you know the, the Pepsi bucket hats. Um, we actually had a misprint in our big posters. Um, and so we got these like huge movie sized posters. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're, they're what is it? Like three by four, um, um, like these huge posters. They were meant to be like just these tiny little things. And we got like hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of these photo or these posters. Um, and so we had those out, which actually kind of turned into a blessing because people were like, yeah, I want to hang this in my house. Like this is a <laughs> dope movie poster. It's like got Mike Penix on it. It's got all the guys. So um, shout out to Mike. A big shout out to Mike. Yeah, he is actually he's one of the sweetest people I've ever met. Oh, he's like, a gem. He's a gem. He's, yeah. He just like keeps to himself all the time. It's amazing. Like you'll you <laughs> think like I was weird. Like just chilling with those guys. It was like first of all, like I'm not as tall as them. Mm -hmm. It's like most of my time I like spent coaching like this. <laughs> it's right. Massive. But, yeah. Like, it was just like how nice and like down to earth like they were i was like kind of surprised i was like because I, I, the uk doesn't exactly have football teams like that so like yeah. when i went across i was like um yeah i think a lot of people like to stereotype athletes into this certain mold of you know they're going to be these cocky uh just kind of like stereotypical like you're you're not as good as me like these you know these egos which sure there are people like that, but there's people like that in every industry. Um, and I've been really impressed with the UW culture of athletes mm. here. I, I think it's it's a great group of athletes. They're they're very down to earth, very humble, and they have every right not to be. You know, we're mm -hmm. doing we have a great program here. Um, so it's nice to know that you know the morals are still in check. Yeah, I mean, I kind of know the back end of how they sort of operate. Mm -hmm. it's like more in the summer but like they they have a great coaching staff and i will yes like i owe a lot of what i'm doing now because of them right. and like just like coach matt coach the board like the way that they run their ship is just like it's next to none like the way that they hold each athlete accountable for what they do mm -hmm. is like one of the best things i've ever seen in my athletic career as well. Oh, absolutely. I We say all the time how impressed we are with Coach DeBoer and his staff. They've just made UW football into a fantastic program. It's yeah. very, very nice to see. Which is like one of the biggest things. So like, obviously I got to spend a lot of one-to-one -one with the athletes and I had a conversation with um, Luciano and me and him were, I was like, like, what's the difference between last season, which was before the board joined and this right. season? And he was like, well, we're, I think, I think they had only won two or four games the season mm -hmm. before. Yeah. And like, he was like, I mean, I'm enjoying coming in. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. fair. Yeah, no, it's it's a great atmosphere when you're winning, but it also attests to, you know, how how well their coaching staff works for our team. Yeah. yeah. 
So what's the staff like at your side of the production? Oh, well, at UW, we have a great team. <laughs> I love my marketing team. Um, you know, we're just working such long hours together that you're you're just kind of forced to all like you have those bonding moments, especially in the chaotic and stressful times. You know, you're you're forced to kind of see each other's bad sides. <laughs> you're like, well, we've got to work together regardless. So, you know, it's it's we've got a we've got a good little team in marketing. Yeah. What's the different roles that sort of get divided between everyone? Mm. Um, all right. So with UW. I've got, I guess they would be considered like marketing directors. And that was, that's like your, your boss man up here. And then you got, um, marketing assistants. Um, then you have assistants to those assistants and then you have our team of interns. (laughs) That's, that's what I would be. Um, so it's just kind of a big chain of like leadership and we all kind of delegate, uh, we, I get my, all of the interns get our assignments from the marketing assistants for more or less. And they'll kind of meet as a team, um, on their side of things and figuring out who we can, you know, trust with certain responsibilities, who's done things before, who's comfortable. Um, like for example, those big towers that shoot smoke, I can't do those. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I get like, I had to do it once in a basketball game and I almost had a panic attack. I don't know what it, I, it's just like, it's one little remote and you have to press like three buttons and it just shoots. But I couldn't, I was so scared. I was like, what if I do it early? Um, and all those like, little technical things. And so they know not to put me on anything with the smoke machines. And I, yeah. I, cause I, I, don't, I just can't do it. Um, but for example, one of the responsibilities I always get is going and getting like our, our special guests. So, you know, I've brought Isaiah Thomas. I'm often bringing um, our university's president down mm. from, Connie bear. Um, so I'm more, more often than not trusted with, you know, kind of those communication interpersonal roles. Um, who's, that's who's like the most shock that you've been with speaking against someone. For some reason, I really haven't been too like, maybe it's just cause I'm in the back of my head. I'm like, Oh, keep it cool. Like be, be professional. This is not your moment to like have a fan <laughs> Um, I don't know. My mom worked as a personal assistant to several different little famous people. And I think hearing from her backside of things, I, I know how to operate uh, in those kind of like situations. Isaiah Thomas was a really cool one. That would happen my first year as a marketing intern. Um, and I, I, yeah, I went and got him cause his car broke down in the parking lot or uh, his car broke down on the way to the game. And he was the one sounding the siren. So we were like, oh, shoot, like he's supposed to be here when the team runs out, his car breaks down, he Ubers to the game. Um, I'm as an intern trusted with going and getting him from the parking lot. And I'm like, oh, wow, well, this is just this is because like, it wasn't supposed to be me. It was supposed to be my boss that went and you know got him. Um, but they trusted me with it. And I went and got him out of the parking lot with his family and brought him in the field, which was a crazy experience. Wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't wasn't ready for that one but it was cool and he's he's also another one that's a, just a fantastic guy yeah fair how how so you've kind of mentioned that like because you've been in sport all your life and you kind of know what you would like to have as an experience what kind of things that when you were growing up in sport made you realize that like viewer experience and all these little factors are important I think it's just because I could go home from every game with like a new set of memories that would stay with me mm-hmm. for so long. I, I, I mean, I remember like my childhood game days so well, like my grandpa had season tickets to the Sharks games as a kid and I would go with him and it would just be the two of us. Um, and I remember, you know, like the Simba live cams, like we do that today. We did that yesterday at the Kraken. So it's like uh, just, you know, we have these consistent fan experiences that, even as a kid, I remember today and I'm like, oh my gosh, which is, it's just a cute like family memory to look mm. back on. So many different families can say that, which is really cool. Yeah, that's sick. You've also mentioned like the podcast that you're thinking about doing. Do you mm-hmm. want to talk that, about that a little bit? Because it's a sick idea. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so my, my roommate and I are both obviously former athletes um, and we just kind of thought through what we've learned in our experience um, 
we want to kind of create a platform to kind of go behind the scenes of other athletes and tell their stories, um, just kind of showcasing who they are outside of their sport. Um, so we basically just want to have, you know, an athlete or a couple athletes on in like a video podcast and kind of open up a space for them to just share some dialogue on, you know, who they are um, outside of, you know, what they play and kind of sharing what their brand is. Yeah, you kind of mentioned that like some players and athletes kind of struggle with that being known as this athlete and then transitioning. What was that experience for you, uh, like for you? You mean as an athlete for me or mm. my? Yeah, okay, yeah. an athlete for you. Honestly, coming out of high school, I didn't really expect to pursue football, obviously, collegiately, although that would have been really cool. <laughs> um, that wasn't really in my head. So that's kind of where I found my brand going into sports. You know, I transitioned from being an athlete to wanting to work on the behind the scenes part of it. Um, right now I'm taking a class. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're back. Um, we were talking about the sort of athlete experience after sort of playing and going into these roles and you were going into a little bit of the NIL. Right. Yeah. So football was my whole life in high school and I didn't really intend to pursue it collegiately, although that would have been a really cool experience. Um, so coming into college, I wanted to find you know, how I could take my experience as an athlete and apply it to my career, which, you know, has led me to working in sports. Um, I've, you know, looked a little into what NIL life is like as I kind of try to see where I want to end up um, professionally. I'm really interested on the NIL branding side of it. Um, I'm taking a class right now at UW called Marketing 315, and it essentially just goes into everything regarding what it's like as an establishing your brand as an athlete um, in the NIL space and, you know, kind of going back to the podcast that um, my roommate Smaya and I want to start. Um, we're just really wanting to give a platform for athletes to think about their brand outside of their sport. And I think it's really difficult when, you know, as an athlete, kind of like how I felt in high school, how they could potentially feel in college when, you know, what you've devoted yourself to for all these years suddenly goes away. Um, and, you know, how can you still kind of capitalize off the brand you built for yourself in college um, and kind of seeing, you know, what that looks like. 100%. Can you explain what NIL means and sort of what it does? Yeah, so NIL um, stands for Name Image Likeness. Um, and, you know, it was established for college athletes to, you know, kind of capitalize off of the brand. I, I always say, I'm like, how did athletes go so long without being, you know, paid for their position in sports? Um, and, you know, it's not to say that they're being paid for how well they're doing, but just, you know, they've established an audience for themselves and they have fans. So how, how would they, it's like they're being robbed all these years of, uh, yeah. you know, potential profit. Um, yeah, that's a very good point because it's just came into life recent that athletes are actually getting paid for what they're doing. What's that sort of change been like seeing that firsthand? Yeah, I mean, it's been super interesting to see and learn about in my class. Um, I, I I feel like this is like <laughs> what exactly I've been learning about in my Marketing 315 class. So if my professor sees this and I misspeak, then <laughs> I hope she doesn't come for me. Um, but yeah, it's just created a whole new different avenue for athletes to kind of think about. There's... I mean, at UW, we have like the Washington NIL store, for example, and that's just that's a really easy opportunity for athletes, honestly, because any athlete at UW can join it. it no matter what team, um, no matter how well you're doing, you can have your name and number on a customized piece of apparel and they receive a certain percentage of the profit. Um, but I think it's also a really interesting in the creative sense. I mm -hmm. I love, you know, kind of going back to I, I just love media and seeing how like the different photo and video production in the nil space um i believe it was this one like video for a it was like a community park or something that maybe it was with Montlake futures i don't totally remember um but it was seeing all of your favorite athletes in all of uw's different sports just going out mm -hmm. to this park and playing like 
uh, what is it called, kickball and like those kind of fun, like little recess games. And that was an advertisement for the park. And they, you know, they were able to use their, you know, platform as an athlete to give exposure to these community parks. It's just, just in a video form. Like it was just so cool to see. Yeah. No, that's, I remember seeing the advert and Romo Dunze was obviously one of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was like, let's go. Romo Dunze, Braylon Trice, Keon Brooks. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So how, what's the sort of process to get in these sort of marketing and media that you want to eventually get into? I think that's a question I'm also trying to figure out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the video podcast um, that I'm wanting to start will be kind of a good stepping stone into that, into kind of creating even like my my own brand and, you know, with, with my roommate, Smaya, shout out. Because <laughs> 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 um, we've always kind of talked about how we want to, you know, kind of make a name for ourselves. For the longest time, I thought I wanted to be a sideline reporter uh mm. in, for the nfl and kind of be like aaron andrews or pam oliver that was my dream the last kind of four years or so since um football but i'm not i i would still love to pursue that and i think that would be a great space um to kind of put myself in i'm just it's it's a far trajectory to get there so you know I'm trying to figure out where i where i stand now. Yeah. I do love taking photos at every game. Um, I have mm. this little like Fuji film camera that I bring with me to every game. And I'm just kind of like a little paparazzi trying to like, kind of establish my own portfolio in a way, just cause I'm kind of taking being in those you know, mm. privileged spaces as a marketing intern or as a, you know, Kraken employee um, and able to kind of build my own portfolio that way. Cause I feel like I should be able to kind of, you know, exploit that space as, you know, I'm, I'm using mm -hmm. my passion for photography, um, you know, while I'm at work and, you know, experiencing something cool. So, yeah. Have you, been, have you made like a, an Instagram page for those Fuji films? Oh, I should. I usually just post them on my personal Instagram and I, I have a little highlight called Fuji film um, that I'll, that I'll usually put them in after. Nice. It's been super um, fun, yeah. What's the best part about like sort of taking around that camera and being in those areas? I just love capturing, you know, it kind of goes back to like uh, the podcast. It's I want to see athletes kind of outside of their sport or that kind of behind the scenes look. Um, mm. So even if I am taking photos on game day, it's predominantly when, you know, that they aren't suited up yet and – they're, they're coming down to the stadium and doing like their dog walk, which is a really special moment where they, you know, they just arrive from the hotel and their bus um, and they walk the field all linking arms together um, and everyone's dead silent and just kind of watching and experiencing this moment. And that's when I want to take my camera out because I'm like, this is just such like a raw moment for you mm -hmm. football and I'm there and able to capture it. Um, or when example, another example is like, you know, when they're, they're coming into the tunnel, that's another space where, you know, they're not being seen by thousands of fans, you know, they've just left the field um, and just kind of, you know, being able to capture their emotions in that moment uh, is, I think it's just something super cool. Yeah. So what's the best, like, kind of experience that you've had in these moments where you're getting to see like the raw side of the athletes? I think it just brings me back to, you know, my own football days and getting to see the emotions of a player, um, of an athlete, kind of even with the dog walk, they're arriving, they've got the headphones on, the music's blasting. You can tell they're just so locked into the game they're about to play. Um, and it's just, you know, I can resonate with that as a former athlete. Um, so it's just, it's, yeah, just another side to see that's, it's really cool to witness. Yeah. What's the best interaction that you've had with an athlete during your roles? Oh gosh, nothing too crazy. I, it's always just, I've, I've befriended a couple of them now. So it's, you know, just like, uh, good, good <laughs> job out there. <laughs> like, good luck. Go get them. <laughs> yeah, go get them. Do, do, your, do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah. No, nothing. I mean, I, I'm lucky that they're all very sweet. Um, 
but we've we've both got our jobs to do so yeah we're both kind of locked into our own spaces no that's sick i mean with the nil stuff i think that's a really good thing as well because a lot of these high performing athletes like they kind of struggle to find that identity afterwards which i think the nil is such a cool program so they've at least got a starting line for what they can do afterwards right we're back again um i do think it's my fault um but we're having some technical difficulties we are back um off camera we were speaking about again the, the nil and how big of a impact that is for sort of these this new wave of athletes and we we're sort of talking about my career where it ended because of a shoulder injury and then i was sort of left like what do i do now like my career's done um my doctors told me i can't play i can't play anymore so what do i do now and we sort of touched on the nil things and you were mentioning how important that can be could you just say what you were saying (laughs) yeah i was saying how um I watched one of the podcasts that our quarterback, Mike Penix, went on, who, I mean, if if someone's had some scary injuries, it's him. You know, he had a career at Indiana where he couldn't go a year without, you know, a serious injury. Um, and he was kind of talking through how, you know, poor of a mental space that can put you in, which is, like, completely understandable. I think anyone would feel that way. Um, and just kind of, you know, as an athlete – say you have a season ending injury, where, where does that put you? You know, you've devoted your whole life and career and, you know, depending on how serious the injury is, you're thinking towards the future of what that could mean for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you know, even want to pursue in that sport anymore, even like, you know, further jeopardize your body in that way, especially with football. Um, and it just goes back to how important, you know, having your own brand as an athlete can be and have, you know, something to fall back on if I'm going to knock on wood again, <laughs> if, you know, anything were to, to happen to you in a game or practice or anything. Um, yeah. What's some of, what's some advice that you would give someone trying to build up that brand of themselves? I think it's just really important to go back to, you know, being your most true authentic self and what kind of makes you, you. Um, I think a lot of that for an athlete can be kind of how they grew up and the different cultures of teams that they played on. Um, Going back to, yeah, just kind of what morals stick with them the most. In one of my classes, one of our basketball players was talking about how interested he is in, you know, the philanthropy side of things and how he really wants to get involved in nonprofits as part of his branding, Mm -hmm. Um, which I think that's a really great way and that resonates with so many people. So thinking, yeah, what, what are your hobbies and interests outside of, you know, your sport, what do you find yourself doing if, it, if it's not, you know, football or basketball or soccer or whatever it is? Yeah. In terms of like, how how would you go about building that name brand and sort of surround yourself with the right sort of people and steps to go through it with it? Mm, good question. I think a lot of it nowadays would be through social media. Um, I think it's finding really creative, uh, you know, videographers or photographers that can kind of help you build your brand, you know, just in the way that different media creators are wanting to create a portfolio of their own. It benefits both parties if, you know, Mm. an athlete is trying to get content and someone's trying to build their portfolio. So I think that's a really good way. Um, I know one story with, um, his name is Nico and he used to be on our UW media team. He, I believe, DM'd DK Metcalf um, and just offered to kind of shoot for him. Um, So it's, you know, it benefits DK Metcalf. He gets Mm -hmm. cool content out of it. And Nico got a great, you know, addition to his portfolio. And then now they have this complete relationship where Nico, you know, travels with him and shoots. He's like his private photographer. Um, So I think that's just another cool story of it really just benefits both parties to, you know, reach out and seek out those different resources that, you know, social media can bring to you. Yeah. How would you approach sort of reaching out to people? Hmm. I would find people on social media that I'm really impressed with their work. And I think it stands out and, you know, it's not like a classic Canva template. You know, they're actually, they have like their own, their actual own brand and image uh, in their work. Um, There's one creator who 
I don't know his name, but he makes these dope videos for a lot of our athletes. He just posted one for Corin Johnson, but Samaya and I, my roommate, we've talked about him. Um, let me find it because I would love to shout him out. He's he's really great. Is that on Instagram? Yes. Um, his name is Luke Abad. Abad. Um, L U K E A B A D. And even I, I do not know this guy personally. I just love the content that he makes. Um, but his bio is art and sports. And when you watch his videos, it is it is like a movie. And he does a great job at you know prioritizing the brand of an athlete. Um, I mean, it is in the realm of their sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's him. Um, yeah, he's just you can tell everything is so perfectly curated. Nice. You know, Adidas basketball commenting on there. So he's made a really great name for oh, himself. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. So if I were an athlete, <laughs> he's who I would be. <laughs> I, have no, I do not know this guy personally, but I, I just am in awe of his work. So Yeah. I think it's as well as, like, you have to appreciate what everyone else is doing as well around, like, what your, like, what your industry is. Like, for me, I'll watch some coaches and some, like, I'll just watch people on YouTube and, like, how they put content together for like their program. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, that's one of the be biggest things for me is like, I'm also not shy. So like, I will just cold DM people like yeah. this podcast is happening because I saw your work with sort of the Krakens, the UW and yeah. I reached out to you on LinkedIn and I was like, hey, do you, do you want to talk about like the media side and like the the advertisement side of things because like like i said at the beginning of the podcast like before we started recording it's like i don't see like everyone being like on a hierarchy thing like obviously there's people that are like have different roles but i see is like everything plays into a part on this whole experience and i think media is and like the production of things is the best way for like athletes getting to that sorry the fans to get experiences on what yes. we're going through and like cool. what we do as like a coaching staff or as a athlete side of things yeah i totally agree i think that's one of the biggest benefits to media is it kind of lets a fan into the behind the scenes yeah i like and i think with what you're sort of saying is like you relate so much because although you like you're an athlete and you've played at a high level but you'd also, you loved watching sports growing up. So like that to you is what you're bringing forward. Right, totally. And I can appreciate other people's media and it just inspires me so much more to create my own and, you know, help other athletes build their brands. Yeah. What would be some of your advice to people that are wanting to sort of make it in the media side and sort of the advertising side of sport? I think you really have to focus on making good first impressions and good connections. I've learned through, you know, my work in getting, or cause my UW boss got me essentially connected with my bosses at the Kraken. Um, so sports is, you want great relationships if you want to work in sports, that's really what's going to get you um, good opportunities. Um, I've learned that time and time again now, it just continues to prove itself. <laughs> yeah. For people that are like maybe a bit younger and can reach out to like these people what are some things that they can do at home to sort of build up their sort of portfolio like you've mentioned i think if it's in media something i really regret not doing is just creating content when i was in high school um i had like a bit of a short-lived tiktok career <laughs> post, <laughs> post high school grad um about football which was fun but I look back on, you know, I want to see my my football memories. And I just wish there was more content I could have created. Um, for someone that's wanting to go into media, you have access to sports teams and you have access to, you know, events like that. And more often than not, people are more than willing to let you in and, you know, just let your camera on through and let you do your thing. And that's just how, you know, you can create a portfolio to bring to a job one day. So, yeah. In terms of like viewer experience, what would you recommend? Sort of how would people get about doing that? Mm. I think if it's um, collegiately, I think most colleges have some kind of marketing intern program like the one UW does. Um, 
And if not, it doesn't hurt to ask um, where you can kind of find a space where that would be. There's so many different elements that go into a game day. And so more often than not, they're just going to want more help. Um, mm. I'm, a, I'm an unpaid intern right now. I'm, I'm volunteering my time to do this. So I don't really know what other place is going to, you know, deny free help. So <laughs> <laughs> might as well, might as well ask always. Yeah. It's also not being scared to like do unpaid work as well. I totally. think yeah. like as an SNC coach, your first kind of like two, three years, maybe four, like that's all unpaid. Right. And like, you're just building up that resume of I've worked with this team, like this head coach has sort of helped me. And like, like my time at UW was free. Like I had to pay from, to go from UK to cross there to do it. But like, I saw that as a big investment in my career. Cause like, totally. it, it's just these little pockets of like, like, did a D1 school like I'm not going to get that experience here yeah yeah no totally I I owe UW um athletics and marketing everything for you know getting me introduced to the sports industry um that was really where I started like I learned front to back how to produce like a soccer game for example my first kind of week in the internship and everything that goes into that and Yes, it's unpaid, but I I wouldn't have it any other way because it's it's it introduced me to connections and experiences that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So yeah, the connections is a big part of it as well because yeah. like I've I've mentioned this to you before, but like most of the people on this podcast or people that I filmed with have mm-hmm. all been in some way, shape, or form connections that I've had from UW. Right, and like that's like it's such a tight network as well. Like if you see someone like on LinkedIn, they've got that dub up. You're just totally. like, yeah, my guy. <laughs> oh, that's, <yep. laughs> that's so true. Yeah. It never really hurts to ask. Um, and people are often more than willing to help you because they've gone through that same experience also working in the sports industry. So hundred percent. I think that like I had Kev on yesterday, he's a recruiter for the UW football team and He's an S and C coach. He coached at the Arizona Cardinals. Like he's he's done quite a lot, but that was his po- first podcast and he was like, I appreciate you for doing this. I was like, I'm just speaking to people who I like to speak to and like mm-hmm. we're just like reconnecting on the experiences that we share that you dub. And like for me it's just like it's sick to see how people are progressing. Totally. Yeah. No, nah, that's sick. Um do you want to plug anything? that you've got coming up or that you want to do? I guess stay tuned with my personal social media because that's probably where you'll see um, where I'll launch our podcast. Um, so stay tuned for that. We hope to have our first episode out in the next three weeks. That's that's nice. the goal we're setting. We're, we're finally setting deadlines. <laughs> that's that's the dream. Nice. So. What would yeah. be, so for anyone that's, is this the one? Yep, that would be me at Layla TW. And you'll probably see some fun little game day content on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Meet with my little Fuji film. <laughs> you should make a page for your Fuji. I should. I should. You're right. I will after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like with in terms of your podcast, like that, like that's a solid idea as well. Cause like athletes, I love athletes struggle afterwards. And I think sort of giving them that platform to be able to put themselves out there and it's like, this is what I'm doing next. Come and, hopefully follow me right yeah i i just yeah i want to create a space where we can have a platform for for them to come on honestly and just share their story and their brand yeah no thank you so much for coming on i appreciate your time of course